Right, let's look at question 5. The hydroxides of group 2 vary in their solubilities in water shown in table 5.1. The student make the following statement. pH of aqueous solution of group 2 hydroxide increases down the group. Explain using the information in table 5.1 why this statement is true. So the more, the more actually this group 2 hydroxide dissolve, right? Let's say for example, MgOH2 from a solid it dissolves to form Mg2 plus aqueous plus 2OH minus aqueous. The OH minus will be the one that's affecting the pH. Okay, the more OH minus there is, the higher the pH will be, which literally means the more soluble the hydroxide is, the higher the pH will be. Okay, so if you look at the table, uh, solubility increases down the down the group okay solubility increases down the group down the group okay which also means that the concentration of oh minus will increase and the ph will also increase okay so that's for part a Suggest a value for strontium hydroxide, the solubility. Um, basically, strontium, right? If you check your pure, uh, periodic table, strontium is actually somewhere between calcium and above barium. So you will propose a value that is like uh, between these two solubilities. Anyone will do. Okay, you can propose 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 mole per dm cube. It's fine. Okay, C part 1, identify the oxides in figure 5.2 that can react with barium hydroxide. Barium hydroxide is a uh, basic, obviously. Um, and basically, from the whole list, right, these two are going to be basic. And this is your amphoteric. And the last four is acidic. So, all of these, uh, including amphoteric and acidic, all of them will react acid and base reaction uh, with barium hydroxide. Okay, explain in terms of structure and bonding why MgO exists as a solid at room temperature and pressure. Why does it exist as a solid? Very simple because it is an ionic compound so you just need to describe in terms of ionic compound. A lot of energy required to overcome strong electrostatic force attraction between oppositely charged Mg2 plus and O2 minus in a giant ionic lattice structure. Okay, so very straightforward there. Uh, the dot and cross here, apologize, uh, there should be one more with uh, oxygen. Uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, the two electrons from magnesium. Why does silicon Okay, next question. Why does silicon dioxide have a higher melting point than sulfur dioxide? Silicon dioxide is giant molecular. Okay, is giant molecular structure. So definitely a lot of uh, energy is required to break the strong extensive covalent bonds. In a giant 3D structure. Okay, whereas for sulfur dioxide is just weak van der Waals forces of attraction between simple molecular structure. Right? So definitely it is much easier. In the last part for this table, uh part five, right? You what you need to do is just take the percentage, right? Uh how to get 56.3, just take 100 minus 43.7%. Okay, you'll get 56.3%. Okay, so you just need to divide this by the AR, you get the number of moles here, and then just divide by the smallest number of moles, which is 1.4096, and then you get the ratio approximately. Okay, this ratio has got to be an integer, so you've got to multiply it by 2. 
across two of them so you can get a uh, ratio of 2 is to 5 empirical formula p2o5 okay next up we are supposed to calculate um, your relative atomic mass this is a standard practice basically what you need to do just take the number of atoms of each of the isotopes and then just multiply them together and divide add them up and then divide by 100 okay you will get an average of 35.5 hi parents and students i'm mr kwa founder and principal tutor from mr chemistry i do these videos to help more students understand difficult chem concepts and hopefully more needy students who are not able to afford tuition they can benefit from these videos please help me click that like button and share it with your friends so that more students can benefit thank you and see you in the next video bye